Okay, continuing our digital painting. What I did last class was create my reference. I created a PSD file where I use compositing. Whoops, I just closed it. To create a pretty low resolution reference to do my digital painting from. So what are the elements here? This is why we study compositing early on in the class because it helps with all aspects. So I took this old illustration of a, uh, I believe it was an Austrian general, changed the perspective on, on him a little bit, changed the, the epaulette on his coat, overlaid it with a Jong Singer Sargent painting because I liked that background and kind of the warmth of it, and then put my dog's Heather's face on there and then you can shift individual things. I wanted to make her eye placed a little bit bigger, clean up some issues. So composite it so that you like the photo as opposed to just taking whatever photo you have because any flaws in your photo reference are likely gonna come through in your painting, whether you're trying to make it photorealistic or not. Once you have your photo reference, and that's what you need for next class, I want you to just save it as a JPEG and then post it to Canvas. So if we go to the assignment in Canvas here, it's assignment seven, last assignment before our final project. It's kind of the last skill set we're going to be introducing. I have a few slideshows I'll share with you next class that you can explore. We're going to learn the, the speed painting technique today. That's how I'll introduce it. But there's also kind of an analytic approach, right? So you can look at all of these examples. Whether you sketch it up like you would a life drawing, if you're doing a portrait or a pet, whether you conceptualize your composition with thumbnails, or whether you, you just start what's called speed painting instead of manipulating lines and, and spaces with line art like you do with digital coloring, you just block out shapes and space and you model it from there with brushwork. And the only things you need to submit for this, it's going to be due within one week, is your photo reference and then your finished painting. And we're going to do just empty backgrounds. I don't need you to worry about backgrounds. You can do an animal from head to toe or you can do a person or caricature uh, from the shoulders up. So mine's kind of an animal caricature from the shoulders up. Okay, and then you post it. Now what do we do with that? Pure digital painting has no compositing in it and it has no rotoscoping in it. It's just like this is our photo we're going to open it up in Photoshop, just our flattened JPEG. And then we're going to create a new file that is our blank canvas. And we want this to be, I'm going to do uh, 11 inches wide, 14 inches tall. The requirement is that it's at least 8 by 10. 11 by 14 is a nice in-between standard size. And I want you to use our lab resolution, 50 pixels per inch higher than professional printing. So 350 pixels per inch, RGB color mode, white default background. This is our blank canvas. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my JPEG and I'm just going to drag and drop it in and tuck it into the right corner. Just like I, I might do with a photo that I'm trying to do a painting of. This has a few advantages. One is that that allows us to easily steal colors from it, but also to kind of reference always what we're trying to work on without having to go between different, different programs. Then I'm also going to load any inspirations. Like I really love this color palette. This is a French artist I follow. And they don't paint digitally, they paint with oil. But I can steal colors, I can be inspired by transitions. 
I really like the sketchiness of this artist. And this is a digital technique. There's also some half toning in there that might be fun to play with. I can always use a half tone brush. And everyone works with digital painting in their own way. And then I'm also going to load this example, which comes from a futurist painter, early 20th century from Italy, who is most interested in showing movement in the art. But because they were painting a little fluffy dog, I thought it might be appropriate. Because we're not going for photorealism here. Right now I can take all of those and just kind of set them as a little inspiration band on the side. And then I'm going to grow my canvas a little bit. So I'll just turn it into a square for now, 14 by 14 inches. So I have plenty of room for my painting over here. I will lock all of those so I don't accidentally paint on top of them or rasterize them. And then my next layer is going to be my first painting layer. And I'm going to call this my sketch layer or my underpainting. So digital painting is incredibly direct. It doesn't require a lot of techniques. You can do it with any kind of digital imaging tool. It's where we directly put pixels down. But we have some different tools to be aware of. So we are going to use the paintbrush. That's pretty much the tool that I'm going to stay on for the length of this assignment. And when you click on the paintbrush tool, you'll see your tool options at the top. You can control the shape of the brush. You can control the size of the brush. Depending on the brush, you can control its edge quality, whether it's hard or soft. You can control its opacity, and you can control its flow. That's how quickly it fills in. But I'm going to show you where we can customize it further. So let's start with a really basic brush, because this is the first time we're directly putting down pixels that we're not later cleaning up to vectorize, right? So if I go to my very basic default brushes, which are at the very top, you'll see you have a soft round and a hard round. Neither of these is built for pressure sensitivity. So I'm going to show you why that's so important. So even though I'm using a tablet, let me switch to the defaults here, and I'm going to just use black just to show. No matter how lightly or, or hard I press, when I use a brush that doesn't taper at the edges, it means it's not pressure sensitive. So even though I'm using a tablet and a stylus, it's just like using a mouse. So that's that brush. If you look at the soft round, you'll see that the only thing that's different is the hardness. Same thing, but it's going to give me a soft edge instead of a hard edge. Now, if I just go down to where they taper, I have a soft round, which based on how hard or lightly I press, I can control with the tablet. This is what you want for digital painting. And that's why it's so important to use a tablet in digital painting. I can make my brush huge, but then barely touch it and still get really thin marks. So very often when I'm using default brushes, which I might just do for the sketch, I'm going to adjust the hardness to about 70%. And I'm going to adjust its size to be a little bit larger than a pencil eraser on my page. So maybe about 220 pixels. Okay, then when I use it, it's going to feel like a nice flow. And you're kind of scratching the tablet. And you'll see you can really vary your direction and the weight of your line. Now I use 70 because I never want to use a, a really, really hard edge for digital painting because this isn't digital coloring. We don't want line art. So that's what a 70 hardness edge looks like. But when I actually get to the painting beyond the sketching, I'm going to show you how we customize our own brushes so that we can really go for the effect we want, whether that's airbrushed and really clean or whether it's gestural, expressionistic, whatever you're going for. 
So should I paint with black for my sketch? Probably not, right? Just like digital coloring, I want to keep it so I have a white locked layer underneath everything as my canvas. It's going to squeeze everything onto the screen here. So I'm going to lock that background layer too, my blank white. And for my underpainting, I think I want maybe a little bit of traditional underpaintings would be done with earth tones, which are kind of reddish browns. So in this scale. And so I'll pick a color like that. I'll use my brush. And then in, I have it at about 220 at a 70% hardness. I'm using one of the pressure sensitive rounds, just the basic brush. I'm going to change its opacity to about 80%. And there's a few ways you can start sketching, right? This is very clean and linear. So, but I'm going to use kind of a scribble technique. I'm just going to scribble in where I think the eyes should go, the, sh the basic shapes that are showing that anatomy like we did when we did creature design. And because I'm using an 80% opacity, you'll see how the lines get a little bit darker as I overlap them. And I can even take that opacity down a little bit when I'm less sure of myself. So I think this ear will flare out to maybe about here. And you just really want to loosen up for your sketch. And then I really want to show off kind of the snaggle teeth of my dog. Because it looks like a smile. Put that in. And you can stylize these paintings. We are not trying to match. We are referencing a photo, but we are not trying to match the, um, the finish of a photo. And to make a dog look more human is, to, is called anthropomorphizing. So I can play with that. But you have to think of all the aspects of the painting. So then we have the uniform. And of course, having a lot of practice with drawing, drawing from observation will help with this. But I'm going to show you a trick, which still makes it so we're not cheating, but we're going to use the advantages of digital painting a little bit without just blatantly painting over existing pixels. OK, so I want you to do a sketch because that shows your own energy. It's going to help you get introduced to your reference image and kind of figure out what's important, figure out what you want to show. And then you're going to do this. You're going to take your reference photo. You're going to make a duplicate of it, unlock it. And using your compositing knowledge, you're going to grow it to fit behind your sketch. This is very different than tracing over your sketch. OK, then I'm going to dim it down. I'm going to onion skin it to about 50%. Then I'm going to take my sketch, and I'm going to use Control-T. And I'm just going to stretch it and warp it, holding down Shift to stretch. I'm going to line up certain features. And I'm going to notice, oh, I had that one shoulder too high. So I might address that. Use warp, put things in place. Hit return. OK, now I'm going to turn off that background. And then I can make little corrections. So I won't use my eraser too much in this project. But when you're sketching, you're just trying to get the basic layout that you're interested in doing.
So now I feel a little bit more confident about this approach.